into number 10, we have the Stanley Hotel. So the Stanley Hotel was the place that inspired Stephen King to write one of the most horrifying novels turned horrifying films of all time. The resort is in Colorado and built into the Rocky Mountains. The building has a rich history of paranormal goings on across the entire hotel, but in particular the fourth floor. The most haunted room is supposed to be room 217. This is the room where King stayed the night and was also said to have once been the site of an unfortunate explosion. This is what Stephen King said about the stay that inspired what is arguably his most famous novel. He said, I dreamt of my three year old son running through the corridors, looking back over his shoulder, eyes wide, screaming. He was being chased by a fire hose. I woke up with a tremendous jerk, sweating all over, within an inch of falling out of bed. I got up, I lit a cigarette, I sat in the chair looking out of the window at the Rockies, and and by the time the cigarette was done, I had the bones of my book firmly set in my mind. Stephen King for King! I love him! Also, I will say, staff who frequent the concert hall at the hotel at night report hearing the whispered words, get out, which would deeply, deeply freak me out. Coming into number 9, we have the Taj Mahal Palace. Located in India, although not actually in the famous Taj Mahal, this hotel has a woesome backstory. Despite the Mumbai hotel being grand and beautiful, it is said that the French architect W.A. Chambers accidentally built it backwards and was so distraught that he ended up committing suicide by jumping from the fifth floor. Now, according to a lot of first hand reports from staff at the Lavish Hotel, the architect still roams the halls at night. The hotel was also the site of a terror attack in 2008. At this point, the hotel was seized and 31 people were killed there. The hotel was back up and running soon after as a symbol of strength and resilience, but the memory of the attacks live on. Coming into number 8, we have the Drovers Inn. Ah, Scotland, I dream of you always. I would stay anywhere in Scotland, even here. The Drovers Inn is located in Invernarnan in Loch Lomond. The Drovers Inn dates back to the 1700s, a time when things were really kicking off in Scotland. The inn is the best kind of hotel because it's also a pub with just a small number of rooms so you can get nice and cosy with those ghosts, of which there are many. Room 6 is said to be plagued by mysterious orb lights. A ghostly child appears in a pink dress on the staircase and room 115 is haunted by a voyeur. It seems that a couple stayed in the room one night and were awoken by strange flashes. Thinking nothing of it, they went back to sleep. The next morning, when they were packing up, they found their camera out of place. Weird. They didn't think too much of it until later when they went through the pictures and there were some creepy images of the couple sleeping. The pair were freaked out as the room was locked from the inside when they went to bed, but nonetheless they called the inn to report the goings on. Now The inn responded and said that no staff would have had access to the room and even if they had, they couldn't enter if it was locked from the inside. Creepy, although I'd still stay there just to be in Scotland. I love Scotland. Coming into number 7, we have Hotel Galvez. I have always wanted to go to Texas. I've never been, but I'm super keen. Although, honestly, I'm keen to go everywhere and anywhere. But still, Texas is high up. Anyway, Hotel Galvez is located in Galveston Island on the Gulf of Mexico and was built in 1911. Over 100 years later, and the Queen of the Gulf is drawing in visitors, although it seems that some guests have never left. Rather than giving you a whole spiel like I usually would, I'm just gonna read you a TripAdvisor review from a spooked guest. Here goes. The hotel is so full of history and the interior is very beautiful. I didn't realise that the Galvez was known for its ghostly visitors, nor was I a believer until now. My friend and I were walking the Galvez and my friend was calling out to Audra, a woman who hung herself in the hotel in the 1950s. Her room was 501 and we were staying a few rooms down. Anyway, we go to sleep that night and at around 5am I woke up and my hotel door is open and the latch is still on and I'm thinking, oh my god. We were intoxicated, so I guess we just left the door open. So I close the door and I go back to bed and I wake up at around 8am and I tell my friend that we left the door open last night. Then I get out of bed and walk over to the door to show her how far it was. And to my amazement, the door kept closing all the way. It just wouldn't stay open. It's spring loaded, so I was confused. Anyway, that's my story of the Galvez. Blimey, this is what happens when you call upon spirits, I'm just saying. Coming into number 5, we have the Russell Hotel. If you hear a creak in the night at the Russell Hotel in Sydney, chances are there's a ghoul on the loose or lurking in the shadows. The Russell Hotel is no stranger to mysterious midnight moans and groans, but the most enduring legend is of a spirit of a sailor who roams the hotel, but most often causes trouble in room 8. 
Guests have seen him lurking over their bed, staring at them in the night. That's a no from me, sir. Back on your ship. Okay, but despite the ghosts and everything, you should actually stay here because it's one of the nicest and most beautiful places I've ever been in the world. Coming into number four, we have Fairmont Banff Springs. I went to the Fairmont Banff Springs earlier this year and it was absolutely breathtaking. The building dates back to 1888 and was a grand railway hotel. The building is a National Historic Site of Canada. But it is teeming with ghosts and ghouls. It is said that a secret room was constructed during the original build, which was only discovered when a fire broke out in 1926. Speaking of fire, some say a burning bride haunts the sweeping ballroom. The story goes that as she walks down a staircase lined with candles, her dress caught fire. In a panic, she tripped and fell, dying from a broken neck. Some say that her spirit haunts both the bridal suite and the ballroom, where she can be seen dancing with flames licking her dress. Also reported it's the spectre of a bellman who haunts the ninth floor, and an apparition of a bartender, and get this, a headless bagpipe player. How that works? I mean, you go figure. The real deal here though is room 837. Legend has it that this is the room that a grisly murder took place in and that guests who stay here are awoken in the middle of the night by screaming. Bloody handprints have also been spotted on the room's mirror. On the upside though, I will once again reiterate that this is one of the nicest hotels in the world and it's absolutely stunning and there's a beautiful lobby dog called Bear. Bear. Coming into number three, we have the Langham. The Langham is a beautiful and very fancy hotel in London. Shout out to my former hometown. The luxury five star rooms come with a hefty price tag and some extra ghouls. Cools. The hotel opened in 1865 and was said to have been the suicide spot of a German prince who jumped from the fourth floor. He can still be seen at the window he once fell from. A doctor involved in a murder suicide can also be found pacing the halls, and none other than Emperor Napoleon III still haunts the basement. Room 333 is said to be the most haunted of them all, with many a spectre wanting a sleepover. The most famous ghost, inclusive to room 333, is a man in Victorian dress who likes to watch people sleeping. Whether or not it's he who shakes the bed violently at night, we don't know. Damn, I forgot to tell you about the ghost with the gaping wound on its face. Next time. Coming into number two, we have the stay on Main. There are 16 very good reasons not to stay at this cursed hotel in Los Angeles. Oh, and also don't let the new name fool you. This is the legendary cursed Cecil Hotel, most recently in the news because of the disappearance of Alyssa Lamb in 2013. The Canadian tourist was found dead in the hotel's water tank surrounded by her belongings after going missing for three weeks. CCTV footage was released of her acting very strangely in an elevator before her mysterious and to this day unsolved death. It literally looks like she's pleading with someone invisible, which freaks me out. Before her death, the hotel was already wrapped up in 16 other grisly, untimely deaths. It's actually thought that the Black Dahlia, a murdered rising Hollywood star, stayed at the hotel before her death. Oh, and it was also said to be the home of serial killers Richard Ramirez and Jack Unterwerger. I feel like it just needs to be knocked down and the grounds cleansed with holy water or something. Finally, coming into number one, you've all heard of Egyptian curses, but we're a little far from Egypt here. We've got the Luxor Hotel. Las Vegas is a place for tortured souls, so it's kind of understandable that so many hotels on the strip are reported to be haunted. I could legitimately make a whole top 10 list about hotels not to stay at in Vegas, but for this list, I'm just keeping it to the one. Luxor Hotel is an Egyptian themed hotel, but it may have angered the old gods. Many people think that it's cursed. Why? Well, attention to detail was actually lacking when the hotel was built. The Sphinx in the hotel is facing east rather than west. West and the building of the pyramid doesn't have the required eye on the top, which is just utter disrespect, right? The Luxor has had very consistently high death rates over the years since it opened in 1993 and a string of misfortune that's also surrounded it. Some people say that seven people died whilst building the hotel. In 1996, a woman jumped from the 26th floor of the building and now haunts the lobby. Another man died while he drunkenly fell from the 10th floor. A hand bomb went off in the parking garage in 2007, killing an employee. In 2010, a UNLV football player dropped dead following a fight, and in 2012, a casino employee was murdered by her boyfriend, once again in the lobby. 2012 was also a bad year for the hotel's rep, as three guests caught Legionnaire's disease, with a further case reported in 2017. One of the guests even died as a result. 
Guests have spotted ghost riders in the boats along the replica River Nile. And in case that wasn't enough, it is thought that the Titanic exhibition at the hotel also invited ghosts from the cruise ship disaster too. Whew, I don't know how many I counted there, but like, that is a lot. And I think ultimately the lesson to be learnt here is don't face your sphinx the wrong way because, I don't know, the gods will come for you. Coming in at number 9, we have the secret tunnels of the Waldorf Astoria. The Waldorf Astoria reigned as Manhattan's most glitzy and attractive hotel that drew in New York socialites over its near 90 year history. For such a rich establishment in a rich city, you know that there are secrets going on behind closed doors there. It seems that below the hotel there is a secret abandoned train station that feeds into Grand Central Station. It is actually said to still be in use by the elite. Grand Central historian Daniel Bruker said that it takes just 7 minutes to get from the hotel to JFK airport, so I wonder who's still using it today. Moreover, some features of the property are under confidentiality protection from the Secret Service, so goodness knows what you'll be finding in those rooms. Coming into number 8, we have the Masonic Lodge. Uh oh. So basically, nobody had any idea that there was a Masonic Lodge hidden behind a wall of a hotel for decades. The Great Eastern Hotel was built in London in 1884 and sits by Liverpool Street Station. This meant that it had its own little railway line running through the hotel as well as the usual amenities and a Masonic Lodge, for good measure. The secret cult room was said to have been built in 1912, but all but forgotten until the rundown hotel was refurbished many decades later. The room has no windows, it has strange Masonic and zodiac symbols including a five pointed star, which is often considered a sign of satanic worshipping. Coming into number 7, we have the shoes of the Titanic. So basically, we're saying that the RMS Titanic, which sunk on its maiden voyage in 1912, was a big floating hotel, because, I mean, it was, right? The ship sank after hitting an iceberg and 1,500 people were lost to the water. The remains of the luxury liner weren't even discovered for decades, not until 1985. Now there have been a few expeditions down to the sea floor, and most hauntingly of all have been the discovery of leather shoes. Why? Well, let me explain. Leather shoes back then were covered in tannic acid. Now, this has protected them from dissolving at the intense pressure of the ocean bed. At 12,000 feet down, it seems that skeletons and soft tissue do dissolve pretty quickly. Hauntingly though, instead of bodies littering the hotel at the bottom of the sea, what is left of the bodies are the pairs of shoes that they fell in when they died. Ah. Coming into number 6, we have one of the most haunted hotel rooms in the world. We have room 333. The Langham Hotel is regularly dubbed the most haunted hotel in London, and it all goes on in the horrifying room 333, half of 666. The Langham was built in 1865, so plenty of time for ghosts to attach themselves to the grand building. It seems that a Victorian era doctor murdered his wife in the hotel, and BBC announcer James Alexander Gordon spotted him at night in room 333. A German prince has also attached himself to the room after reportedly jumping from a fourth floor window. Guests of the room have claimed that they've been tipped out of bed at night while they sleep. None other than Emperor Napoleon III is also said to haunt the hotel, although not the room specifically. Also spotted in the hotel in general have been an old footman in a wig, a butler and a man with a wound to his face. All men, all male ghosts, it's an absolute boys club at the Langham. Lads, 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 ghost lads, bad lads dead lads. I'm gonna stop. I'm actually kind of here for this one at number 5. We have Salad Days. Redditor Ghibli1 posted a question on Reddit asking hotel workers to share the weirdest thing that they've ever come across in a guest room. This is what Sean McDeath wrote. As the owner of a bed and breakfast place for the last 8 years, the craziest thing I ever found was an old battered notebook with why I love salad written on the front. It was literally 40 to 80 pages on why salad was amazing. They said that there'd be the occasional suggestion that the author believed salad to be alive in some sense. It looked like it had been written on and off over the course of several years. I absolutely love that. Weird, sure, but a novella about salad and it potentially being alive. Honestly, I think I'm here for it. I think I need to start writing a journal about salad. I've written too many love stories and odes to cookies, and you know what? Maybe it's time that I paid my respects to the good old lettuce leaf and a radish. 
I love a radish. Coming into number three, we have the painting. On the fifth floor of the Driscoll Hotel in Texas, you will find a painting with a big reputation. Love Letters is a portrait of a four year old girl, Samantha Houston, painted by Richard King in the same style of pre existing works by Charles Trevor Garland. Samantha was the daughter of a Texan US senator. She died long before she was supposed to in 1887, aged four. She tripped and fell down the staircase as she chased a ball. It seems that as a tribute, the Driscoll Hotel in Texas had the painting commissioned, which still hangs in the halls today. But it seems that Samantha's spirit may have imprinted upon the picture, as guests say they've heard her giggling when they're near. Many guests report feeling like she's trying to tell them something, saying they've seen her expression change when they look at the picture. This may not be the only haunted painting in the hotel. It seems that an 1890 portrait of Colonel Jesse Driscoll, the hotel's namesake, hangs in the entrance hall, and his eyes are very, very scary. Coming into number two, we have the letter in the walls. A construction worker renovating the 100 year old Hotel Congress in Tucson, Arizona, found an old charred letter in the wall. What was it doing there? Literally, this brings the saying if walls could talk alive, right? The letter was dated to 1934, the same year that the Tucson establishment suffered a fire. A historian from the area said, In 1934, John Dillinger, the famous American bank robber, came to Tucson. Part of his gang was staying at the hotel, and the hotel caught fire, they escaped. They were ultimately apprehended, and it was the only time that Dillinger was ever caught by police, and that was right here in Tucson. Now, the letter was much discussed in the press in July 2019, but I can't actually find anywhere a print of what it says. You can see pictures of it, so why has no one reported what it says? Because I'm thinking maybe there's some creepy stuff that they just don't want us to know about. Finally, coming into number one, we have the old haunted mirror. It is said that a mirror in the Roosevelt Hotel in Hollywood is haunted by a very famous. Spectre. The iconic hotel opened in 1927 and has had many glittering famous guests in its 92 year history, including Clark Gable and Carol Lombard, plus Marilyn Monroe, who it seems may never have checked out. Marilyn Monroe lived in the hotel for two years, and some of her early magazine covers were actually taken poolside at the Roosevelt. It is reported that she still haunts her old room, Suite 1200, although specifically, she haunts the mirror. The suite's mirror was taken into a manager's office for cleaning, and the employee dusting the mirror claimed to have seen a very sad looking blonde woman glancing at her. Turning around to talk to the woman in the room, the employee found not a trace of a human there. When she looked back into the mirror, she saw the blonde woman still looking forlorn. <gasps> Starting off this countdown, we have the comforters. So when you stay at a hotel, you expect your room to be nicely made up, right? Clean sheets, fresh towels, and blankets. Well, that's not always the case. One of the dirtiest things in a hotel room is the comforters. They never wash them. That's right. Imagine how much work that would be to wash thousands of heavy comforters that take up so much room in the washer. So instead, they just don't wash them. Meanwhile, they are being used by hundreds of people, and who knows what they do on them. Seriously, it's disgusting. Also, those little extra blankets the hotel has, yeah, those are never washed as well. Whatever you do, don't look at those under a black light. You will be scarred forever by the amounts of fluids and stains on them. I swear, you're better off bringing your own bedding with you next time you go to a hotel. Coming in at number nine, we have infestation. There is a certain level of pest that every hotel is allowed to have, which makes sense. You can't let one ant shut down an entire hotel. Well, sometimes this can get out of control, and that doesn't mean the hotel is going to call the health inspector to get everything sorted out. They're gonna try and deal with the problem in secret before anyone discovers their dirty little secret. And that is what happened to Redditor CSS Wizardry. He was staying in a hotel, and when he got to his room, something was very strange about the floor seemed like it was constantly moving, like the floor was alive. Now he had just come in from a long plane ride and the extreme heat, so he assumed the reason that he was seeing this was because he was a little dehydrated. He tried to relax and drink some water and see if the strange effect would go away, but after some time he looked back at the ground and lo and behold the ground was still dancing around. Turns out there was bugs all over the ground, so many that it made it look like the floor was alive. Mm -hmm. In our eighth spot, we have the hotel glasses. Maybe you arrive at your hotel after a long day of traveling and all you want is a nice cold glass of water. But I must warn you, never use the bathroom glasses for a drink. Why? 
Well, first off, undercover cameras at hotel revealed that maids often don't wash them out with soap before the next guest arrives. If they look clean, then they are clean, even if they aren't. Not only that, some hotels clean the water glasses with furniture polish to make them look extra clean and shiny. Drinking furniture polish residue can't be too good for your health. So you're either getting really dirty, unclean glasses or shiny, toxic glasses. You pick. Coming in at number seven, we have pillowcases don't get changed. Apparently this is a little trick of the trade. One way hotels will cut down on cost is by doing an eyeball over the pillowcase and seeing if it's dirty. If it doesn't look physically dirty, well, it's good for another round of guests. So the dude who is just sleeping on your pillow with eczema on his face and acne on his scalp, well, those hot, wet juices are now soaked into the pillowcase and they're about to be soaked right into your face. Yum. Apparently this is something that hotels do because most people don't use all the pillows and this saves money and time. The cleaners have less work to do by replacing all the pillowcases so they can get in and out of rooms faster. And they have less laundry to do at the end of the day. This makes everything more productive at the cost of your face skin. On top of this, this really cuts down on the amount of pillowcases they have to buy. Because I don't know if you know this, but nothing does more wear and tear on your clothing and bedding than the washing and drying process. So before you lay down in your next hotel, room, check to see if there's any leftover scabs on the pillowcases. Mm -hmm. Making our way down the list number six, we have the dirty sheets. I'm telling you, I'm never going to stay the night at a hotel ever again. I am so grossed out and it only gets worse. So hotel workers have been exposing some of their dirty little secrets on an app called Whisper. This app is meant for you to confess your secrets anonymously. And some of the things the hotel workers revealed were very disturbing. So one person revealed why why you should always be polite to the hotel staff. Because at their hotel, when people are rude or disrespectful to them, they change their sheets with dirty ones from another person's room. Ugh, yikes. So when you're out thinking that the maids are cleaning your room, nope, not at all. They're making sure you're getting a good night's sleep on someone else's dirty, stained, sweated on sheets. Coming in at number five, we have workers have the safe code. Make sure you leave all of your passports and everything worth something to you in the safe. No one will be able to get it and you don't need to worry about any of your stuff getting stolen. Well, what if you forgot the password? Do you think that stuff is just gone forever and the hotel will have to buy a new safe? No, not at all. Most hotel safes have a master code that anyone can put in at any time. Sometimes it's something as simple as zero, zero, zero pound. Now you hope that only the higher level hotel staff have access to these things, but the truth is that word normally gets around and several of the people who come into your room to clean it or make sure that everything is working properly have the password to your safe. So maybe hide your prized possessions in a more clever place than the most obvious place in the room. In our fourth spot, we have bed bugs. One thing you should always, and I mean always, do before unpacking is to check the bed for bed bugs. Untuck the sheets and inspect that mattress. Why? Well, hotels have had very bad bed bug problems. Someone could easily bring these bugs with them, and during their stay, the bed bugs get settled into the hotel bed. Then when you stay there, they will be biting your legs at night. They can even get into your bag and come home with you and infest your house. And it takes thousands of dollars to get rid of a bed bug infestation. So watch out. Too many hotels have had a bed bug problem. Some of them even ignore it to save money. Coming in at number three, we have sometimes things get skipped. Not everything in your hotel room is going to be clean. Sometimes things are just not going to see any sort of sanitation. The biggest things are things that get used all the time, but you don't really think about cleaning in your own home. Things like remote controls, light switches, and lamps. Now, do those really need to be cleaned? Well, when thousands of people have touched them before you, it would be nice if they saw a little soap and water. But sometimes big things get skipped over. This happened to Redditor professional intern. This person was staying in a hotel, they laid down their luggage, and then they were ready to step into the bathroom and have a nice shower. Little did they know they were in for a big surprise. The whole bathroom was covered in pubes. They said there were so many pubes, it seemed like it was a practical joke. You would expect the bathroom to be clean when you come to stay in a hotel room, but I guess this place had a different policy. Coming in at number two, we have the hidden cameras. No, hotel staff have not installed hidden cameras in your room. 
it's actually worse than that. Creeps have been going around installing undetectable cameras in hotel rooms. They then watch your every move or they stream you online for others to watch. It's disgusting. In 2019, there were a bunch of news stories about travelers finding hidden cameras in their hotel rooms. Typically, these cameras are super small. Like they can fit inside the cross of a Phillips screw head. That's how small they are. These cameras get placed on smoke detectors, alarm clocks, and even shampoo bottles. In South Korea, a crime ring was busted after secretly filming and live streaming over 1,600 hotel guests. It's so creepy and a total invasion of privacy. And since the cameras are so small, they could be anywhere in your hotel room. And coming into the number one spot, we have sleeping in a dead man's bed. When you have thousands of people coming in and out of your hotel every year, some of them are old, some of them have health problems, and some of them are just unlucky. The thing is, someone is going to die. Maybe they will die in the tub. Maybe they will die in that one chair that every hotel room has. Maybe it will be in the bed. But the scary thing is, once this does happen, the room will be closed down for a short time. Literally, a sanitation crew will come in, remove the body, the cops will come through and check to see if it is a homicide, and the cleaners will come through and do a quick flip on the room and then it's back on the market, baby. So in less than 24 hours, you could have a room that someone just died in, flipped and ready for the next guest. So next time you stay in a hotel and ask for an upgrade and they tell you, oh, a room just opened up, maybe you should ask them why the room opened up. Number 10, we have a bunch of heads. After this kind of experience, I wouldn't be surprised if you quit your job cleaning hotel rooms and move to another country and start your passion project of selling watercolor paintings. Sounds much nicer than what we have going on here. This story was written on Reddit by Reddit user The Lock. He said that he ran into a maid in a hotel that was distraught. She was running down the halls screaming and crying. You can guess what happened next. They called the police and the dude who was staying in the room Room was arrested. But get this, the guy never ended up going to jail. How can you have 10 heads in a bathtub and just walk away without even a slap on the wrist? Apparently, this guy worked for a cadaver lab. He was transporting the heads and left them in the tub to thaw. So next time you take a bath in a hotel, remember that bath might have been used to thaw out some human heads. <laughs> That's disgusting. Ah, at number nine, we have Peekaboo. The relationships we have with hotel workers and and ourselves are built on trust. We just trust each other to not do anything weird. And it's moments like these that make it hard to trust the hotel staff. A couple in Mexico was staying at a resort and they noticed something strange in their hotel room. There was a large hole in the bathroom, a hole about the size of a quarter, maybe a little bit bigger than that. They called the front desk who went to investigate. It shouldn't have been anything weird, right? Well, that's when they found out that the hole led to a maintenance room where a camera had been set up who was filming every Everyone who went to the bathroom there. Someone had been spying on people in their bathroom and recording it for who knows how long. They quickly switched rooms and then who knows what happened from there. I have no idea if the peeping Tom was ever caught. At number seven, we have how many feet do you have? It's normal to leave a little bit of a mess behind when you stay at a hotel, but you don't want to be a complete slob because you know someone has to come and clean it up after because we're still trying to be a civil human being. You don't want to treat your cleaning staff like that. That's just rude. But this story is just crazy. Redditor Pool with No Ladder used to work at the front desk of a hotel and he would get to hear all the crazy stories the cleaners would come back with. One day he said that there was a room that was covered in toenails. Two people have been staying there for a weekend, so even if they cut all their fingernails and their toenails, there should be only 40 nails maximum. But the cleaners said that there were hundreds of them scattered everywhere, like to the point where if you tiptoed through the room, you would get stabbed with a little nail in your toe. It's so Gross, how does that even end up happening? They went in there with like a bag of toenails and just started throwing it all over the room? That's disgusting. At number six, we have, I feel 10 pounds lighter. Now, some people have conditions that cause their bodies to act in weird ways, like having really bad dry skin. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but I don't think you would want to be the person who was in charge of cleaning the tub after they gave themselves a little bit of a scrub down and all their loose skin was floating around. A cleaning person at the Hilton Hotel came to find a tub that had something strange strange going on. All over the dead sides was a ton of dead skin, like enough to fill a Ziploc bag. An elderly man had just been staying there and I guess he decided this was the best time to give himself a deep clean. The girl who was supposed to clean the room gagged and ran out and I didn't get details as 
to whether or not she came back to finish the job. I know, I wouldn't have. At number five, we have That's Not What That's For. Redditor user Arlie77 had a very strange thing happen to her when she was staying at a Hilton. I don't know if you can even blame the cleaning staff for this one because who thinks about cleaning the ice tray? But Arlie77 went to make some ice with the ice tray, and when she found the ice tray, it was already full. But there wasn't water in it, there was human poop. Someone was trying to make poopsicles out of their own dung. For what purpose? I will never know. Maybe you need to keep your toilet water cold? This would make me never trust anything in a hotel room again. Oh my god, it's disgusting. And number four, we have, we're in the middle of something? Please, whatever you do, knock before you come into any room. Frankly, even your own room. You never know if there's gonna be something creepy going on in there. This Reddit user deleted their account so I couldn't get their name, but they did say that they used to work as a bellboy and they would have to deliver room service from time to time to different rooms. One night a room ordered four bottles of champagne. They must have been celebrating something. Well, it looks like they were celebrating a rap party because the people in there were in the middle of shooting a porno when he opened the door. They are probably like, hey, Hey kid, put the champagne down on the table. And have you ever thought about being on camera? At number three, we have party room. You walk into your hotel room and the first thing you think is, oh my God, what happened in here? This is horrible. And then the second thing you think is, oh, someone had a really good time. Redditor goddess, and that's goddess spelled two big G's, a little O, two big D's, a little E, and then two big S's, left a story behind on why she quit her job in the hospitality industry. She was working as a hotel cleaner and walked into a room that looked like it was the most insane party of all time. Let's go down the list of things that were all over the room. Condoms filled with semen everywhere. Stains all over every part of the room. Mystery stains as well as blood smears on the wall like identifiable stains. Crack pipes and heroin needles all over the place. And to top it off, there was a bunch of puke. Puke on the walls, puke around the toilet, puke on the floor. And the biggest mystery was how puke got on the ceiling. How does that even happen? Did someone perform an exorcism? in this room. Well, she got the front desk to call the police and the crazy thing is, after the cops left, the people she worked for still wanted her to clean the room and so she did the smart thing and quit her job. No one should force you. Heroin needles, you don't clean that up. And number two, we have signs of escape. People using sleazy hotels as a way to traffic humans isn't just a thing people throw into low budget movies as a trope, it's actually something that happens in real life. There was a flight attendant who was forced to stay at a crummy hotel because a flight she was supposed to work on got delayed due to snow. This this wasn't super uncommon, but she noticed something strange about the room. There was markings all over the door next to the lock. She realized someone had drilled a lock into the door so it could be sealed from the outside. There was also scratches all over the radiator like something metal had been rubbing against it, like someone had been chained to it. She called the front desk who then called the police, but it turns out the person who was staying there gave fake information and they couldn't be tracked down. That is a very terrifying. And for the number one spot we have, I left a present for you. The Redditor Broadway rocks is taking the cake on this one. She used to work in a hotel where a family had been staying for a month. Their house had burned down so they had nowhere to go and you want to feel bad for them but they were absolutely awful to the staff, yelling at them and the father would constantly hit on all the female employees, like super gross. One day they left to go visit friends and the hotel staff saw this as an opportunity to clean their suite because they were never allowed to go inside there. When they walked in there was a horrible smell and after further inspection they found that someone had taken a poop in the microwave and was running it like they were heating the poo to get the poo smell everywhere. Someone was trying to cook a poop in that place. Then they opened the fridge and they found more turds. There was turds in the drawers of the fridge. On top of that they had jars of leeches for some unknown reason. These people were removed from the hotel and then charged an immense fee for the amount of damage they did and pooping in the microwave. Alright everyone that has- In our ninth spot we have the Hay Adams. Located in Washington DC, this hotel is said to be the most famous hotel in in the capital. That's because a number of big hotshots have stayed there, like Obama. But the hotel has a pretty haunting past. In 1884, John Hay, who was President Abraham Lincoln's private secretary, and Henry Adams built their homes on the plot of land where the hotel was built upon. In 1885, Adams' wife, Marion Hooper Adams, ended up taking her life there. She had been battling a case of serious depression, triggered by the death of her father 10 months earlier. In 1927, after Adams passed away, the houses were destroyed and replaced with the hotel. 
but it didn't matter because Marion's soul is attached to the land that she died on, so she now haunts the hotel. Guests and staff members have frequently reported hearing the sounds of someone crying. They believe that it is Marion weeping over her heartbreak and loss of father. In our 8th spot we have the Bali Gali Castle and I just absolutely love the name of this place so I had to put it on today's list. Like Bali Gali, Bali Gali, I don't care, it's funny. Anyways, this was a castle built in 1625 Ireland. Now it has been transformed into a hotel. Turns out that years ago the original owners, Lord James Shaw and his wife Lady Isabella lived in the castle. That was until Isabella's death. She either fell, jumped, or was pushed to her death from the top of the castle. To this day, her ghost still haunts her old home. She has been seen wandering around the castle, knocking on doors, and on multiple occasions can be heard weeping from her tower. Moving on to number 7, we have room 873. Located in the luxury mountain resort Banff Springs Hotel, room 873 is so haunted that they had to permanently seal it up, hoping that it would seal away the evil with it. According to a number of legends, decades ago a family was killed in room 873. In 1928 a married couple and their daughter checked into the hotel, but they never checked out. During one night the father ended up taking the lives of his wife and daughter before taking his own life. No one knows why he did this. Soon after the room was refurbished and booked out to visitors, but weird things started happening in that room. Guests would wake up in the middle of the night to sounds of screaming in their room. When they would flip on the lights, they would see bloody handprints on the mirror inside the room. Obviously, they would freak the hell out and run to the front desk, but when the staff went to the room to investigate the prints, they would be gone. It was happening so frequently that they decided to board up the room. In fact, if you go to the hotel today, there are rooms ending in 73 on each floor, except on the 8th floor. In the spot where it should be, you can tell that a room has been boarded up. In our sixth spot today, we have Lizzie Borden House. Turns out that the infamous Lizzie Borden House, where she allegedly killed her parents, is now a fun little bed and breakfast. But a haunted fun little bed and breakfast. So, story goes that back in 1892, both of Lizzie's parents were found dead. After investigating the scene, Lizzie was the only person who seemed guilty, so she was blamed for their murder. While staying there, guests have reported seeing doors open and close on their own. Also, late at night, apparently Lizzie can be heard laughing at the top of the stairs. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Omni Grove Park Inn. Back in the 1920s while staying at the Omni Grove Park Inn in North Carolina, a young woman was either pushed or jumped to her death from her hotel room 545. To this day, her presence still wanders the walls of the hotel. Some guests have felt her presence, others have seen a strange pink mist form around them, and some have actually seen seen this ghostly woman herself. She appears in a flowy pink gown, hence why people just call her the pink lady. The people most sensitive to seeing her are young children. A number of children have seen her and been like, mommy who's that lady in the pink dress? Meanwhile, no one's there. How freaky. Coming in at number 4, we have the Ostasaga Resort. Located in New York, this resort has quite the fair share of history. When it was first erected, it was actually a school for girls, and to this day, these little girlies still haunt the area. Apparently, while on the third floor hallway, you'll be able to hear a bunch of them giggling and whispering. In fact, sci-fi's ghost hunters went to investigate this place a couple years ago, and when doing so, they captured the presence of a bunch of shadowy figures, ghostly whisperings, and other paranormal activity. If you want to check out the place today, go to the second, third, and fifth floors. That's where all the spooky stuff is said to happen. In our third spot today, we have La Posada de Santa Fe. This resort and spa hotel is anything but relaxing. Turns out that it is haunted by a German woman named Julia Stab. Oh my god, her last name is Stab. It's probably like Stab. It definitely is because it's German, but anyway, it makes it spookier. Before it was a resort, it was her mansion. It was built by her husband in 1882. A couple of years later, Julia fell into a really bad depression. Her eighth child ended up passing away shortly after birth, and so Julia locked herself in her room. She didn't leave her room until 1896. 
When she passed away, her soul latched onto the house. To this day, she still wanders around the halls. Most frequently, she will appear in Suite 100. It's now a guest suite, but it used to be her bedroom. In fact, Julia loved to take baths, so people staying in the suite often hear the water running in the middle of the night. Moving on to number two, we have the Fairmount Royal York Hotel. Turns out that there's a haunted hotel in my hometown and I didn't even know it. Toronto's Royal York Hotel is nearly 100 years old. Construction of it finished in 1929 and over the years a number of members of royalty, celebrities and millionaires and ghosts have stayed at this hotel. Seems to be a nice luxury hotel, minus the fact that it's completely haunted. One famous ghost is the man dressed in a purple coat that wanders around the 8th floor. There's also ghosts of children haunting the halls. One guest told the concierge that they heard children running up and down the halls on the first night that they checked in, but they saw no children. When they looked through the peephole the next night, they saw a grey haired man with a purple waistcoat. They initially thought that it was a hotel staff member, but when they opened the door, the man disappeared into thin air. The hotel also has a crystal ballroom that is also haunted. Guests frequently hear noises and music within the ballroom, even after it's been closed. And in our number one spot today, we have room B340. Queen Mary Hotel is said to be one of the most haunted hotels in America. There are a number of ghosts that haunt this hotel, from Jackie, the little girl who haunts the first class pool, to a man named John Petter who was crushed by a watertight door, to second senior officer William Eric Stark who accidentally drank cleaning fluid instead of gin and one of the cooks who was baked alive by his own staff during World War II. So yeah, a lot of dark things have happened on this ship turned hotel. Now there is one room that you never ever want to visit and that's room B340. It's the site of a huge tragedy. So back in the 60s, the ship was used for transatlantic cruises. Well, while on this cruise, a man went crazy and took the lives of two women in this room. When his crimes were discovered, he was locked in the room until they could dock the ship and deal with him. The door was locked from the outside and a guard was positioned outside the room so the killer couldn't escape. At one point, the guard heard the man pounding on the door saying that someone was in the room with him and was trying to kill him. Obviously, the guard was like, I ain't no idiot, I'm not falling for that, so he never opened the door. He thought this guy was just trying to get him to open the door so he could escape. Here's where it gets weird. Shortly after, the guard heard nothing coming from the room, so he thought the man finally settled down and went to bed. The next day, the ship arrived in New York and the NYPD boarded the ship to arrest this man. But when he opened the door, they found the man's body parts scattered across the room. His limbs had been ripped off and were all over the place. There's no way that he could have done this to himself. So what happened in there? Was there actually someone in that room with him? If so, how did they get in and then out? A number of guests who have stayed in that room have reported eerie things happening to them in the middle of the night, like flickering lights, knocking, apparitions, and the water turning on and off by itself. At number 10, we have Orgy Aftermath. That's something they never tell you about orgies, is that someone has to clean up that slimy mess after. That is not the position you want to be in. Well, Redditor Gazeka used to work as part of a cleaning staff at a boutique hotel. She said there was a group of students who had come from Japan. Five of them were sharing one room. And the last night they were staying in the hotel, I guess they had a big goodbye orgy, as you do. The cleaning staff came in to find used condoms and dirty underwear thrown all over the room, and for some reason they had uneaten McDonald's that was in the drawers. I guess if you take a break from having sex with your friends, you want to grab a little snack, and it's nice and convenient if you can just open a drawer and it's filled with McNuggets. On the bright side, it seems that the students were well aware that cleaning up after an orgy is not fun, and they left the cleaning staff a huge tip. That's very nice. So them, it's like, if you're gonna pick up my condoms, at least give you a bunch of money. At number nine, we have Later Gator. A hotel front desk got a call from a distraught cleaning lady saying that she refused to go into one of the rooms and clean it because there was a monster in the room. But she didn't get a good look at it. She just saw green skin and what looked like claws. She refused to go in. The manager was more curious than he was afraid, so he ventured into the room. Once he got in there, it turns out that he too two would come out running, but with a much more logical answer. Someone had brought an alligator into the room and left it there. Well, I don't think there's anything in the hotel cleaning manual that teaches you how to deal with large carnivores.
carnivorous predators that would just be walking around the room and waiting to rip you limb from limb. So they called animal control. They came in with nets, ropes, everything you need to bag a large gator. Turns out they didn't need any of those things because the alligator was dead and seemed to have been dead for a long time. Why did this mystery guest bring a dead alligator in there? Was it for a trophy? Was it for food? I guess we'll never know. At number eight, we have as big as both my hands. This was a description from a man who was staying at a hotel in Thailand. Him and his girlfriend were going on an amazing trip together. I mean, it's Thailand. What could ruin this place? It's a place that is so affordable and there are thousands of tourists who just want to party. Apparently in the room right after they went to sleep, they saw that they had a visitor climbing up the wall. Up the wall was a tarantula that was as big as both this dude's hands, like next to each other like this. This is how big this bug was. And this part I find even crazier. He got up and then he shooed the thing out of the room. Why would you do that? I would just move out or switch rooms or maybe even negotiate with the spider and be like, hey, how about like you can take, you be in here from like nine to five and then we'll be in here the rest of the time. Like what we will work a schedule together. The spider, like you're, you're clearly the boss, man. At number seven, we got burn, baby, burn. This is what's so weird about hotel rooms. You never have any idea what someone is going to do in the room before you get there. Like maybe they were just in there napping for most of the week. Nothing strange was going on. They weren't really having an exciting time. Or maybe they were preparing to take down the whole hotel with one strike of a match. Gina Solito was given the key to the wrong hotel room and when she opened the door, there was something that would scare the hell out of anyone. Garbage had been taken out of the cans and thrown all over the room, mostly paper. Someone had gone to the bathroom and disabled the fire alarm and then all over the walls and floor was lighter fluid. She quickly notified the hotel staff and they came up to deal with it, but she never found out if that person had already checked out. Like, did the person just think they were gonna leave the room like that? Or did they set up the room like that so they could come back and then burn the whole hotel to the ground? I don't know, it freaks me out. At number six, we have a murder victim. A DC lawyer was found killed in his hotel room in 2015. Someone came in and stabbed a 30 year old man and then ransacked the room. It seemed as if the person was looking for something. They went through his wallet and they attempted to get into his phone. The police later released footage of this person who was guilty of the crime. This could have been a hit put on the lawyer to silence him, but David Messerschmidt was not a big time lawyer. The more logical answer was this was a robbery gone wrong. Someone looking to make a quick buck which led to the death of this young man. At number five we have so much blood. This one comes way of Reddit user Davey does. He said that it looked like something pulled out of a horror movie. Like this wasn't just some blood smeared on the wall after a paper cut or you like you're cooking you touch something. It wasn't like that. No, there was tons of blood. Like enough blood that it puddled in the middle of the floor. It was splashed over the walls and he did what any sane person would do and he took a little for his own personal collection. No, of course not. I just used a little dark humor for dramatic effect. Of course this dude called the police and waited until they arrived. They did everything they could do to try and contact the girl who was staying in the room, but they could not get a hold of her. He said he had no idea what happened to her and the police sealed off the room for a long time. Probably to take a few samples and photos, but the story is still a mystery. I mean, maybe this girl is fine and she just needed a place to skin a goat for some satanic ritual or who knows. I don't know why there would be blood all over a room. Probably a murder, but we don't know. And number three, I see you. The last thing I would want is people to see what I do when I'm alone in a hotel room. It's nothing gross. I just I don't want them to see me acting out 37 fake arguments like yeah and then I would say this and then I'd do that. <laughs> well reddit user Turkenike found something that would make it very hard to sleep at night. She noticed a red light that was peeking through one of the air vents. This was very strange as there shouldn't be any sort of light coming through the air vents. So she decided that she would go and investigate what this little mysterious light was. What could it be? Maybe she would find a button that would give her freedom from the simulation that Elon Musk says we all live in. Well it was wasn't as exciting as that, but it was much more creepy. What she found instead was a webcam. Someone had set up a webcam in the vent. Nothing like knowing someone has been watching you without you knowing to make it easy to fall asleep at night. Why would people do this? There's literally endless amounts of porn all over the internet for free. Isn't that better and easier and less time consuming? And number two, we have hotel meets butcher shop. I don't really know anything about the Amish and I guess they don't really know a lot about 
us because this story proves they have no idea how we act day to day and what the proper etiquette is for a hotel room. This reddit user deleted their account so I can't give them credit for this one but they wrote about working in a hotel for one summer and there was an Amish family reunion. 60 Amish people staying at the hotel. Well after about 3 days other people in the hotel started to complain about a horrible smell that was coming from one of the rooms. Our redditor went to go investigate. It took a minute but they eventually located which room the smell was coming from. The people weren't in the room so they entered. The smell was brutal but they pushed on to the source which was coming from the bathroom. And then they found a fully skinned deer bleeding out over the bathtub. A bunch of fish on strings hanging out to dry and dead rabbits all over the countertop. The good news is, is that the redditor knew that deer were not in season so they were able to call the sheriff to come deal with it. That is a huge win for them. They didn't have to take out the dead deer all by themselves. And for the number one spot we have some home cooking. After a fire alarm was triggered in the Tropicana Casino and Resort in Atlanta, some firefighters went to go investigate and they busted in the door not to find a bunch of stuff burning but a meth lab. Two dudes were staying in the room and thought it would be a good idea to start cooking some meth. Maybe they thought no one would find out. I just don't get the logic here. Wouldn't be easier and safer and more traditional and more rent effective to just rent a trailer and then cook meth in there? I mean I've never cooked meth before but last time I checked hotel rooms weren't exactly known for their ventilation. I don't think it's the right place you want to go if you want to cook up some Walter White specials. On to number 8, the Crescent Hotel, the hotel in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. So this used to be one of the most luxurious resorts when it opened in 1886. But tough economic times hurt the Crescent Hotel and it closed in the 1930s. In 1937, Norman Baker opened its doors once again and turned it into Baker's Cancer Curing Hospital as a man without a medical degree. It was discovered that this fraud physician was indeed running a scam. Today, the hospital has returned to its former luxurious glory, but some spirits from the past still lurk around. Some spirits included are some of Baker's old patients, including a commonly spotted Theodora. She is most often spotted fumbling her keys outside room 419. Another spirit seen around the property is a man who helped build it, Michael, an Irish stonemason who fell to his death. If you happen to stay there, they have nightly ghost tours that end at the morgue, a morgue that still remains intact from its time as a hospital and it is said to be a hotbed of paranormal activity. Number 1. The Red Lion Inn in Stockbridge, Massachusetts so all the way back in 1773, a small tavern was established on the corner that would eventually house the Red Lion Inn. In 1896, while it was known as the Stockbridge House, the entire property burned down in a fire. It was rebuilt and opened the next year, then continued to change ownership and names throughout the years. With all of that history, the inn is said to have quite a bit of spiritual activity. Guests often see figures, including a young girl carrying flowers or a man in a top hat on the premises. But room 301 is the room to go if you really want a creepy encounter. One man recorded his experience on TripAdvisor. In the middle of the night on three different occasions, I woke up feeling my toes being tugged on and someone scratching my hand. I also felt as if someone or something was under the covers with me at one point. Then at 9am in the morning, I woke up when I heard the maid knocking at the door. She opened the room with the key, walked in and headed for the bathroom. I heard the footsteps come out of the bathroom and stop by the bed. Then it suddenly felt as though someone was fluffing up the comforter as if trying to make up the bed on the left hand side. As hard as I tried, I could not move and I could not speak. When I looked up, I realized that I was in the room alone and no one had been there. If I was that guy, I would check out of that place immediately, but he was there for a business conference and had to deal with it. This countdown, we have the snakes. Imagine laying in bed and all of a sudden feeling something scaly slithering up your leg. Again, I wish I was joking. But finding a snake in hotels or hotel rooms is actually quite common in warm places, especially Florida. Snakes have been known to wander into resorts and then slither into guests bags or find their way upstairs. Nothing is worse than going to unpack and finding a snake in your bag. Actually I lied, what's worse is waking up to a snake in your bed beside you. That happened to one guest in Florida. The snake somehow got into her room and then got into her bed while she was asleep. Thankfully the snake wasn't poisonous. But still, no one wants things like that to happen to them. Coming in at number 9, we have the dirty movies. So at some hotels, you have limited TV channels. But one thing that you will always have is the adult movie section. Now none of those are provided for free, so if you wish to watch an explicit movie, you'll have to pay for it. And you may think that it's just your dirty little secret, but no, it's not. The hotel staff know who orders what 
and when. So they know exactly what you're doing upstairs in your room. Awkward. Moving on at number eight, we have the crimes. So if you're staying at a hotel, you might think you're completely safe. I mean, you're in a locked room, the hotel is monitored by security, and they have a bunch of cameras monitoring the hallways. But are you really safe? Well, a study revealed that robbery and assault are pretty common crimes that take place in hotels. People that are traveling often have a large sum of cash on them, making them easy targets. In fact, there have been a number of cases of people wandering into hotels and then breaking into hotel rooms and robbing the place. According to the Seattle Times, a statement released by police officials states, and I quote, more and more guests are being physically threatened in or near their rooms, or worse, attacked or killed. That's super scary to think about. That's the last thing you want to think about while being on your vacation. In our seventh spot, we have the bargain hunters. When you go on vacation, you want the best deals possible. You want to spend the least amount of money, but still want an amazing experience. As a result, you may use third party websites to get a hotel room at a discounted price. Hotel Trivago. But maybe this isn't the best idea. You may save money on the room, but you'll pay later on in other ways. A number of hotels revealed that those that book through third party sites may not get a five star experience. Since those guests are paying less, they are often given the crappiest rooms in the hotel, they may not get fresh towels every day, and maids probably won't do a deep clean of your room. Well, they don't anyway, but still. Why? Well, they are making less money on those stays, so why would they put the time of day into those guests? They are more committed to pleasing the loyal customers. In our sixth spot, we have the personal items. Former hotel staffs have warned guests to never leave any of their personal hygiene items out, like beauty products or their toothbrush. They shared stories of times where annoyed housekeepers would use guests' toothbrushes to clean the toilets. Okay, now I have trust issues. I swear, I'd rather camp outside than stay in a hotel room now. Another employee admitted on the Whisper app that they frequently use guests' stuff. Basically, this app is a way to confess your secrets anonymously. And the hotel industry had a lot to say. So she admitted that she would test out guests' hair products or skin products. So now it said to never leave any personal items out on display. It's safer to keep them in your bag when you know housekeeping is going to be in your room. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the thieves. Maybe you're staying at a really nice hotel with soft, comfy robes and plush towels, and you think to yourself, huh, they won't notice if I take a couple of things. Chances are, they will notice. Some hotels have started using radio frequency identification technology to prevent theft. Basically, hotels have embedded small chips into certain items to track them. These items are embedded into towels, robes, and linen to prevent them from being stolen. And they are alerted once the item leaves the property, so they will know if you're stealing from them. I mean, putting trackers and towels does seem extra, but hotels lose thousands of dollars every year just from stolen items. So think twice before you nab a couple of towels to take home as a souvenir. In our fourth spot, we have the mini bar. One of the things that was drilled into my head as a kid is to never take anything from the hotel's mini bar. For starters, they're so expensive. Like, who's trying to pay $20 for a mini bottle of Fiji water? Not me. Because of the high prices, some guests will try to be sneaky. Hotel staff have revealed that some guests will take the drinks and then to avoid paying for them, will refill the bottles with water or even urine. Yeah, that happens more often than you think. The hotel staff recommend that you check the seals on all bottles in the mini fridge so you don't get charged for another guest's fun. Moving on to number three, we have the ice bucket. Since you're staying in a room where thousands of others have stayed before you, you gotta be careful. Who knows what those guests were doing in the room before you got there. Hotel staff have found vomit, urine, and feces in ice buckets and coffee makers before. 
I know, it's disgusting. So either avoid those items completely or scrub the crap out of them, literally, before you decide to use them. In our second spot, we have the room service. Room service is super convenient. Maybe you just had a long flight and are jet lagged and you just want to stay in bed all day. With a click of a button, you can have meals delivered right to your door. But this secret reveals the reason why you shouldn't order room service. So again, this secret was exposed on the app Whisper. One hotel worker admitted that at her work, none of the workers ever buy lunch. Instead, whenever someone orders food to their room, they all just carefully pick the meal before sending it up. Yeah, so whenever you get a fresh meal, it may just be that multiple people have been digging their fingers into it before you. Another worker at a different hotel revealed that if a guest isn't the nicest to them, then they will spit or tamper with their food before sending it up. Messing around with another's man food is no joking matter. Not cool guys, not cool. And in our number one spot we have the hotel room corpse. So around 1991 there was a famous urban legend about a couple vacationing in Las Vegas who found a dead body under their hotel bed. Well. Turns out that this has happened to multiple people across the world. All of these individuals started to notice a weird odor emerging from under their bed. When they inspected, they found a dead body. In 1999, a couple was vacationing in Atlantic City when they discovered they were sleeping on a mattress that contained a body. In 2010, a couple in Memphis found the body of a missing person, Sunny Millbrook, under their bed. They also found fabric softener sheets shoved in the ceiling tiles to try and hide the smell. Gross. I mean, it's already weird sleeping on a mattress that thousands of others have slept on, but sleeping over a dead body? That's disgusting. Maybe you should always inspect your hotel rooms before you decide to spend the night there. In our number 10 spot, we have tarantulas. Yeah, I've never been a spider person myself, and those of you that are, well, Honestly, I'd love to analyze your childhood. But in any case, yes, a tarantula was once discovered in a hotel room. Probably the most frightening thing ever. A couple was on a trip in Thailand and going to bed when they saw a shadow on the wall. Obviously being nervous as to what the heck it was, they immediately turned the lights on and Bam, there it was, a giant tarantula on the wall. Holy crap, I'm pretty sure I would have been terrified to sleep again after that, even after it had been removed. In our number nine spot, we have a firearm. A maid was cleaning the hotel room one day when she found a firearm, a revolver, under the bed. Whoa, that would very much terrify me. I would probably have had a moment of, you know, looking around the room, feeling fearful that someone scary was hiding and going to jump out of the shower or something any minute, so yeah, that would have been terrifying. Anyways, unfortunately the hotel was unable to locate the owner as the hotel only vacuums under the bed every six months. I wish I wish I knew what hotel that was because every six months doesn't seem very sanitary. You would think that the maids would still look under the bed just in case there isn't any inappropriate, you know, adult items lying around, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. In our number eight spot, we have a webcam. This one is another one that's uh, probably out of one of my worst nightmares and feels like it's also straight out of a horror movie. A man was just, you know, unpacking his things in his hotel room when he discovered something flash in the vent. Of course, being curious, he decided to inspect it. What he found was a webcam. Who knows where that footage was being streamed to, but it is still so, so freaky. The camera was seemingly dying as that's why it was flashing, but Lord knows how much it already streamed. Pretty nerve wracking. In our number seven spot, we have the toenail bag. Look, I understand if you fast forward this one because when I read about it, I almost puked in my mouth. But then I had a sip of my delicious coffee beside me and all was well in the world again. One day, when a manager was on duty, the cleaning staff reported to him that they had found a bag filled with a disturbing amount of toenail clippings. Oh, <laughs> so gross. If there were more than 10, then you know that whoever had this bag was keeping maybe theirs and someone else's, but 
but wait, <laughs> actually it doesn't matter how many because the fact that they're keeping them at all, let alone in a bag for whatever reason is, is very disturbing. <laughs> is that like a weird fetish that I've never heard about? Yikes, that's so gross. <laughs> I can't help but laugh, it's very disturbing. In our number six spot we have baby ducks. Apparently there once was a guest that possibly rescued a bunch of little ducklings after their mother died, or perhaps she was the reason their mother died, that part is unclear. Anyways, this guest kept the ducklings in a hotel bathtub and must have gotten bored and decided, all right, well, peace out ducklings, I'm over you, and then just left. Well, the hotel staff, of course, found the ducklings in the tub and then they transported them to the hotel office where someone came by and adopted them, thankfully. Even though the woman who put them in the tub is definitely questionable, I guess perhaps it might have been good as they might have had a harder time without their mother and who knows if they would have found their way. I don't know much about ducks and how long they need to be with their mom, but hopefully whoever took them took care of them well. In our number five spot, we have a bloody Bible. Well, this one is a bit intense to say the least. In a Motel 6, of course, a Motel 6, in Riverside, California, a man found a Bible in his room allegedly with blood smeared all over it. Of course, he concluded that this was either a a satanic ritual of some sort, B, someone who really dislikes the Bible, or C, someone who accidentally got a severe paper cut while reading the Bible. It happens. <laughs> if I ever found a bloody Bible, I would instantly assume that I had been cursed and would probably get on my knees and pray. Not that I'm very religious, but that scene would surely make anyone pray, right? Am I right or am I right or am I right? <laughs> I would then proceed to call all of my loved ones in case I die, and then begin to also persuade someone to pay for me to move to a Hilton where they leave little chocolates in your room, not bloody Bibles. This isn't an ad for Hilton. <laughs> in our number four spot, we have a snake. One night, a maintenance technician was working what he thought to be yet another shift, but boy, was he wrong. Around 10.30 in the evening, he gets a frantic call from the front desk lady telling him that he has to go check a room out now as there is a snake in there. There's a snake in my boot. I couldn't help myself. He thought that something was miscommunicated or someone was playing a prank but when he got to the room, he saw three guests terrified and yep, there was indeed a snake in the room. A massive one too. It was wrapped around the pullout sofa and it was right at the part you would have had to go to pull it out. Yikes, that gives me the heebie-jeebies. I honestly am undecided as to what's worse to find in your room, a tarantula or a snake. We'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. In our number three spot, we have a corpse. I'm sure you were waiting for this one. I wonder how many times this has happened in hotel history. I really feel for hotel staff, man. They have to deal with so, so much. Baby ducklings, tarantulas, snakes, corpses. Whew. Anyways, a corpse was found underneath one of the beds in a room. The body was wrapped in a bag and the police suspected to be about a week dead when it was found. So that meant that a number of guests stayed in this room and slept on this bed with a corpse underneath it. That's it. I'm never staying in another hotel room without checking underneath the bed. These hotels really need to make their staff check under their beds more often. How scary. In our number two spot, we have the Rolex. A man went to his hotel room in Las Vegas only to open the door and discover a number of diamond necklaces, gold rings, and Rolex watches laid out on the bed. The value was anywhere from $30,000 to $100,000, probably closer to $100,000. Anyways, he just thought he had the wrong room. So he went downstairs, confirmed his room, and sure enough, it was his room. He decided to tell the staff what he found and the staff applauded him for his honesty and decided to give him a room upgrade. Honestly, that kind of money is life changing. I truly wonder how many people would have turned it into the staff. I bet you anything this man probably possibly regretted his decision afterwards. I would have definitely felt morally obliged to tell the truth, but it would have hurt my soul like at the same time. In our number one spot we have a baby. Yup, 
a baby was found in a hotel room once in Mexico by a couple. They opened their door only to find the baby lying on their bed in a blanket. Not knowing what to do and also not knowing Spanish very well, they tried to speak to the front desk lady over the phone but she wasn't understanding them. So they brought the baby down to the front desk only to be approached by a crying lady and two cops and one of them handcuffed the couple. After a translator was found to smooth over the situation, the couple was told that the baby belonged to one of the cleaning staff who was new to the hotel and she couldn't remember the room she left her baby in and since she was new, she was too scared to tell her boss that she brought her baby into work, let alone forgot the room. So she ended up telling her friend and her friend called the cops. Wow, what a wild situation to get caught up in. I bet that's a story they will never forget. Coming in at number 7, Fort Gary Hotel. Built in 1903, since its doors opened to the public, many famous figures have stayed overnight, including Queen Elizabeth II, King George VI, Louis Armstrong, even Liberace. But don't let the star-studded guest list ease your suspicions. This place is straight up frightening, especially room 202, where it said a woman took her own life by hanging in the closet. Those that have dared to stay in the haunted room claim they saw blood rip down the walls and that a terrifying woman wearing a cloak would appear out of nowhere, often hovering over the foot of the bed while you sleep at night. What's even scarier is that some say she will crawl into the bed with you and that you can feel her cold, ghostly frame wrap around you. But it's not just the room where you might run into the spooky ghoul. She's known to haunt the hotel lounge as well, where staff and guests alike claim to hear loud cries coming from the same corner. I mean, unless you're looking to literally cuddle up with a ghost, I would steer clear of this one. Coming in at number three, Hotel Provincial. Branded as one of the most haunted places in New Orleans, the Hotel Provincial is located in the infamously haunted French Quarter. Back in the day, there was a military hospital just down the street from the hotel, and one of the buildings used a medicinal herb garden for the hospital, which seems a little strange, but does make sense when you find out the kinds of spirits that haunt the halls. Today, the hotel consists of five buildings, and although ghosts are known to lurk in each, the most haunted building is believed to be number five. Guests of building number five have reported seeing insane things, such as Confederate soldiers covered in blood, moaning from agonizing pain, who miraculously disappear once the lights turn on. Others have reported apparitions of surgeons in the halls, and maybe most disturbing is the amount of guests that have seen strange pools of blood appear on their bedding or the floor that disappear just as fast as they came into view. One guest even reported that as the elevator door opened on the hotel's second floor, the hospital was entirely in view. So it seems as though the soldiers that died in the hospital down the street took a liking to the hotel and continued to haunt all the visitors who enter to this day. And last up in our number one spot, La Pavilion Hotel. Just minutes away from the notorious French Quarter lies the luxury luxurious pavilion hotel. But despite its lavish exterior, it is believed to be the home to over a hundred spirits. And some paranormal investigators even believe the building sits on top of a portal to the other side. An interesting theory considering the building's less than ideal history. Although today the area is a tourist hotspot, back in the 19th century, the ground where La Pavilion sits was deemed completely inhospitable and incredibly dangerous. It was the frequent spot for foul deeds and late night killings, which is likely why so many spirits reside in the hotel's four walls. Among the most talked about are a couple seen dressed in beautiful clothing roaming around with googly eyes. The couple will enter an elevator, but then it never goes anywhere. Instead, the usual ping sound rings loudly and the doors open up again, revealing no one inside. Many also claim to have witnessed a young woman on the ninth floor reported to have died on the steps of the hotel, but the truly terrifying entity only reveals herself at night. One guest staying on the most notoriously haunted ninth floor said that in the middle of the night, he was woken by a woman dressed in all black, sitting at the foot of his bed. He was speechless and terrified and went to scream, but the entity leaned in, ran her icy cold fingers through his hair and said, you belong to me. I'll never let you go. Needless to say, he never returned, and I do not blame him. If I ever saw that lady in my room, I would be running as fast as I could. Starting us off at number 10, 
cameras. A woman came to Texas for what she believed was a legitimate job interview with an IT service provider, but instead she found herself being recorded in a hotel room booked for her by the man claiming to be the potential employee's CEO. The woman said that the man booked the room for the night and he checked in before her arrival. She suspects that when he put a video camera disguised as a clock in the room. After she was in the room and had started getting undressed to get ready for the interview later that day, she said two men walked into the room unannounced. The men told her they thought the room was vacant and left almost immediately, but wouldn't tell the woman why they were there. There was just a gut instinct that something wasn't right. I just knew I was being watched, she said. After looking around the room, the woman noticed the digital alarm clock had a quarter sized camera in the face. She unplugged it and took the back off and minutes later got a call from the supposed CEO asking her if everything was okay. She told the front desk and hotel staff moved her belongings into the new room and the woman called the police. She didn't hear from the man again and said when police tried that same day calling a number he'd given her, it had been disconnected. The woman is now suing the man for intruding on her privacy and causing months of mental anguish, according to the lawsuit. And honestly, I hope she wins because that is scary. Next up at number nine, Shadow Figure. A Reddit user said, I used to work in my aunt and uncle's hotel in a Scottish village about 12 years ago, and the freakiest thing that happened to me was one night when I was sleeping in the staff quarters and heard a banging noise from along the corridor. This was about 3 a.m. After most of the staff had gone to bed. I got up to go and tell whoever was coming in late to shut up so I could go back to sleep, but the corridor was empty. Well lit, I have to add. This is key. So I walk down to the end of the corridor to see if it's folks coming up the stairs, drunk or whatever. I look down to see a figure stomping up the stairs. The only way I can describe it is as though a shadow of a person that was solid. There were no features on the face or clothes on its body. I turned and ran back to my room and shut the door. I could still hear the stomping for some time and I don't think I got a wink of sleep at all that night. I didn't leave my room until the sun was shining through my window. I asked a few of the other staff if they'd heard the banging that night, but nobody else had. Moving on to number eight, the phone call and break in. The online user posted this story saying, my father was staying at some crappy Motel 6 in a shady area of town. His room was the last room at the end of the hallway on the top floor. In the middle of the night on the last night he was in town, he was woken by the phone ringing in his room. It was the front desk and they said something along the lines of, sorry to wake you, but we've been receiving a couple of reports about rooms being broken into and some stuff being swiped. We're just calling to make sure you lock your door and are safe. My father replies that he's fine and hangs up. He decided to go double check that his door is locked. As he sits up in bed, he notices that the door to his room is ajar. Being spooked, he cautiously checks the room and finds that nothing is missing and no one else is in the room. He creeps to the door and peeks out. Sitting right outside his room on the windowsill of the hallway window is his shaving kit. Creeped out of his mind, he quickly grabs it and locks the door. After he calms down a bit, he calls down to the front desk and says, hey, you just called me about the break-ins around the hotel and I just want to report that my room was broken into when I was sleeping. Nothing taken and I'm fine. Figured you'd like to know. The front desk replies, you must be mistaken. We never called your room and we haven't received any reports of break-ins. Creepy. Moving on to number seven, scary woman. This Reddit user said, I once stayed in room 410 of the Queen Anne Hotel in San Francisco. Woke up in the middle of the night needing to go to the bathroom and saw what appeared like a decaying woman with withered flesh and a blue white glow at the foot of the bed seeming to stare at me in spite of having eyes that were just black sunken holes. It was so terrifying I passed out. Woke up in the morning and told my girlfriend at the time about it when she came over. She laughed and when I asked why she said she booked that room because the hotel was supposed to be haunted. 
that room specifically, and she was using me as a blind test case to see if it was true. Ended up staying there another three nights without anything odd happening. Next up at number six, room 217. Stanley Hotel is very haunted, but one of the most haunted rooms is room 217. The room is thought to be haunted by Elizabeth Wilson, aka Mrs. Wilson. She was the hotel's head housekeeper and during a storm in 1911 was injured during an explosion as she was lighting the lanterns in room 217. She survived, though broke her ankles and her spirit seems to be a regular in the room. Guests have reported items moved, luggage unpacked and lights being turned on and off. Oh, and Mrs. Wilson is old fashioned. She doesn't like it when unmarried guests shack up together. So some couples have reported feeling a cold force come between them. Now, this is where horror writer Stephen King spent the night and got the inspiration for his 1977 bestseller, The Shining. When King and his wife arrived at the hotel, it was closing down for the season and they were the only overnight guests staying there. They ate dinner in an empty dining room Room while pre-recorded orchestra music played before retreating to their room on the spacious and eerily empty second floor. King woke up that night to a terrifying dream about his three-year-old son being chased through the corridors and screaming. Due to this, he jerked out of bed, realizing it was a dream. He lit a cigarette on the balcony and the plot for his now famous book shaped up. Coming in at number five, employee disappeared. This user tells a story from when they were young. They said, I was once in a hotel with my sister and we were walking through the halls. Then we decided to have fun and see what staff doors were open. We got into the weight room, it was 3 a.m., supposed to be locked, and started screwing with the weight equipment. Just as we're about to leave, this one employee gets up from the dark corner and walks out in front of us. We rush out just to see him walk down the stairs. Still in the mood of adventure, we head to the stairs and see her going down and down. She went to the basement and then gone. The stairs ended in a cut off area and there was nowhere to go, but she was gone. Creeped out, we took a zigzag path back to our room not to be followed. Next up at number four, housekeeping. A Reddit user said, I worked housekeeping in a chain hotel. There was one room at the end of the hall where the faucet would turn on full blast by itself while anyone was working in there. I'd be cleaning the room and suddenly hear water gurgling down the drain. Another time I was working on the tub and heard it turn on behind me. Whoever or whatever it was would also turn on the TV. I was warned on my first day that things would happen in that room and then while making a bed I'd suddenly hear muffled voices and see that the TV was on. Whatever part of the room my back was to it felt like someone was there. I got the feeling they didn't want to be in the way but they didn't didn't want to be alone. Quote, none of the staff felt threatened. We all felt that the entity was lonely and trying to reach out. The hotel has since been bought by a college and was turned into dorms. I hope having people staying in the room more steadily will be a good thing for whoever that spirit was. Maybe they felt less lonely with students actually living there than a revolving door of hotel guests. Moving on to number three shaking door. This hotel worker said, I was working late, just past midnight, when I went to use the bathroom in the lobby. It was a pretty standard large men's bathroom with urinals and sit down stalls. I was the only one in there and I went to use one of the urinals. As I was peeing, I heard a rapid knocking sound coming from behind me. I looked and saw the door from the handicap stall vibrating, which was what was making the knocking sound. It was like someone locked the door and was shaking it. I figured it was a co-worker playing a prank, so I laughed and said, very funny. It immediately stopped. I walked over, knocked, and the door swung open. No one was inside. I ran the hell out. Quote, there was no way the door could have made that noise without being locked. I still use that particular bathroom, but never late at night. I really can't think of a logical explanation for this and was terrified. Coming in at number two, 
the face. This user told a story about a family vacation saying, when I was 15 my family went for a trip to a hill station named Shimla in India. We booked a suite in a hotel in which the master bedroom had a glass platform 8 by 8 feet sticking about 2 feet outside the room over the valleys which were hundreds of feet below us. I decided to sleep on the platform overlooking the hills and valleys while my dad slept on the bed. My mother and sister were in the other bedroom. So at around 1.30 at night, I was sleeping on my side facing the glass, which was about 3 inches from my face. Suddenly, my eyes opened and I saw a woman looking at me intently from outside the glass. I still remember clearly her face was totally pale and eyes dark with black hair and some dark clothes on the body. It took me 3 to 4 seconds to realize where I am and that this is not some human looking through a window but some entity floating outside my room. I shouted as loud as I could and pushed myself back so hard from the glass that I ended up hitting the other end of the room by force. My dad woke up and turned on all the lights, but there was no one to be seen now. That was the last time I ever slept with my window shades open. And last up in our number one spot, the body. Sony Millbrook was first reported missing in late January of 2010. News reports say Sony was staying at the Budget Lodge Hotel and was last seen on January 27th. A missing person's case was opened a few days after her disappearance and family members had later come to clean her belongings from the motel. The case ended abruptly on March 17th when her body was found inside the bed frame in the room she was occupying. It said her room had been cleaned many times since January 28th, workers told police. The room also had been rented out several times since her disappearance. Motel staff called detectives after a foul odor coming from the room led to the discovery. Police said Millbrook's body had been stuffed in the metal box frame which sits on the floor. The box spring and mattress are also set inside the metal frame. Number 9. The Hotel Del Salto. This Colombian hotel was first erected in 1920. 23, and it has quite the reputation. That's why it has its dark nickname, which I can't really say the name of here. But suffice to say, a good number of people have died here. This place is absolutely gorgeous, overlooking the Taekwondama waterfalls. But legend has it that in order to prevent being captured by Spanish conquistadors, the natives of the area would jump from these very cliffs. During the hotel's operation, a good number of people took their lives there or would fall by by mistake and his picturesque building became steeped in sadness and despair. The building still stands today, now having been transformed into a museum, but some still say not to go near the property at night as countless lost souls still roam the grounds. At number 8 we have the Hotel del Coronado. This beautiful San Diego hotel is known to have had some pretty famous guests like President Ronald Reagan and Katherine Hepburn just to name a couple. But there's also one ghost who checked in and has never left. Her name is Kate Morgan and she's been haunting the hotel since her death in 1892. Kate Morgan had checked into the hotel and spent a few days there before taking her own life. She'd had stomach cancer and was waiting for her brother, who was a doctor, to arrive and assist her with her illness, but he didn't show up and she hadn't received any letters. Her spirit is said to roam the property to this day, still waiting for her brother to finally arrive, especially on the third floor. Her room is frequently requested by paranormal enthusiasts. There's another ghost supposedly said to haunt the hotel though, an actress by the name of Isidore Rush who drowned by the beach in 1904. Staff have reported seeing the lights turn on and off in her room that she'd been staying in even when the room is empty. Next we have the Mermaid Inn in East Sussex. This historical building was built at some time in the 12th or 13th centuries. With a building that old, it's no surprise people say it's haunted. Gotta say, it'd be pretty incredible to stay in a place like this. This place has quite the history. It was originally frequented mostly by medieval sailors from 1420 to 1770. It was a bar and an inn which was frequently visited by the Hawkehurst Gang, a group of privateers who terrorized the area. The Mermaid Inn saw a number of deaths at the hands of these criminals over the years, some of 
which had been attempting to snitch on them. One of the leaders, Thomas Kingsmill, who was executed in 1749 for his crimes, is said to haunt the inn till this very day. The inn was eventually reopened in 1993, and guests have reported seeing a ghostly figure of a woman in white standing at the front of their bed when they wake up. There's also the spirit of a maid who died at the hands of a smuggler in room 5, which has been reportedly haunted well before the modern era. And of course, you have Thomas Kingsmill himself, who supposedly haunts a rocking chair in room 17. At number 6, we have the Mizpah Hotel in Nevada. This hotel opened in 1904 and was one of the first luxury hotels built in the state. It's a really nice looking hotel with Victorian era decor. I imagine it looks almost exactly as it did in the 1900s. As luxurious as this place is though, there's a dark piece of history that still lingers within the walls of the building to this day, and that is the death of a guest whose name has been lost to time, but is known simply as the Red Lady. The Red Lady was believed to have lived at the hotel, providing a specific service for male clientele. The oldest trade in the world. The story goes that one of her clients saw her with another man and in a fit of jealous rage took her life. In some versions of the tale she was strangled and others she fell to her death from the fifth floor. But no matter what version you hear, it all ends the same way, with her spirit lingering within the hotel. Men will sometimes hear her disembodied voice whispering sweet things in their ears. Some have reported finding a pearl from her broken necklace under their pillows. You know what, that doesn't sound bad actually. I'll take a pearl and a seductive whisper, why not? Number three, the Ancient Ram Inn. Now, unfortunately, you can't actually stay in this place now. The owner uses it as their home. Man, I'd love to get a room here. The place was built all the way back in 1140. That probably isn't super exciting for the Europeans in the audience or like anyone really outside of North America, but I don't think I've ever stepped foot in a place that old. Anyway, you can only imagine how much history surrounds this building. This place was actually built on the grounds of a 5,000 year old pagan burial site. Reports of strange occurrences including ghostly apparitions and disembodied voices have been reported and as to what spirit or spirits these voices belong to, one of the most famous legends involves a witch who was supposedly burned at the stake on the property at some point in the 1500s. There are also legends of a number of tragic events, such as human sacrifices that are said to have taken place within its walls. Mm -hmm.